that's it. That's called Gunung Barumbun. And we're back. I uh, ran out of, I didn't have enough battery in my camera to, to finish the review yesterday up in the mountains. So we get to finish this review down here in the comforts of civilization. Um, these are the boats that I'm reviewing. These are the Rocky S2, S2Bs. Uh, I think it's probably best to start by any, any commentary on, this boots, on these boots by saying these things are all about the sole. That is by far the best feature of them. It's a very soft rubber, which is uh, good, especially in jungle environments. And all of my commentary will be limited to, uh, to its application in jungle environments. I can't answer to uh, going on long ruck marches on pavement or asphalt or walking over uh, rocky and dry desert type conditions. This is strictly a jungle review of these boots. And in the jungle, these soles do fantastic. They are far and away the best part of this boot. Um, I will say I could use a little bit more uh, shank support. Uh, I'm used to that. I've been wearing for 20 years the, the old jungle boots, the US military issued jungle boots. Uh, I am ex-military, so I've got a lot of experience with boots and a lot of different types of environments. I could use a little more shank support. Uh, I'm used to it. That said, I, I don't think I'd really take anything away from this boot, uh, just because it's it's a little softer, it's more, you know, they're going for the tennis shoe effect that's, that seems to be really popular right now. So it is very flexible, very comfortable. They market it as the, the sole comes up along the sides and your foot sits in the sole, so you have a lower profile that way and less heel roll. And yeah, they're incredibly stable. I didn't have any problems at all with stability or ankle support. Uh, fantastic in that way. The sole is soft enough that it grips most rocks very well. It grips soil and mud incredibly well. It did fantastic in soil and mud. Uh, it's fairly good at cleaning itself. It's not like the traditional vibrant soles where you end up carrying around five tons of mud on each foot. Uh, cleans itself quite well. And on steep slope, as you've seen earlier in this review video, uh, we had plenty of steep slope, and it, it just grips very, very well, better than anything that I've, that I've worn so far in the jungle. So if, if you're looking for sure-footedness and traction in a jungle environment, you can't beat this, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, on slick rocks, there are soles that would do a little bit better than this, uh, but in my opinion, there is no perfect jungle boot. There is no boot that does well on all surfaces and in all environments. So if I had to choose a sole for all of the different types of surfaces that you're going to encounter in the jungle, I would still choose this sole. It's, uh, it's far and away the best one that I've uh, ever had on my feet. Now the rest of the boot. You'll notice that the coloring on this boot is a little bit dark right now. And that's because 24 hours after getting home yesterday and hosing them off and cleaning them, they are still soaking wet. And that's, I think, one of the, probably the, it's the second strongest con associated with this boot. They use this kind of suede type material, this leather. It's quite thick. Uh, and inside, it's got this kind of neoprene feeling material, which, to be honest with you, is incredibly comfortable. And, and I really enjoy that. It's very comfortable on the foot. But all in all, it's a heavy boot, and it just doesn't dry out quickly, which is ironic to me given the fact that they market it, you know, with these, these fancy holes that they have on both sides and up here, and they say that it, you, know, you can walk the boot dry. Well, I got to tell you, in a jungle environment, in a tropical environment, utter nonsense. You'll never walk this boot dry, and you'll need two or three days after you get it wet before it is dry again. Again, this is, this is 24 hours after washing it, and it's still completely wet. So don't count on having dry feet in these boots. Now, that said, for a jungle boot, that's not necessarily a bad thing, because depending on what you do, there are some trails that you trek where it is a, it's a trail trek. And you may not have to cross too many rivers, and you may not run into too much wet undergrowth uh, or too much mud, and you might be able to keep your feet dry. 
So, but that's that's the minority of occasions where you're going to be wearing this boot in the jungle. On the, in the majority of instances, you're going to have your feet wet. And so they're just going to stay wet, and they're going to stay wet the whole time. Understanding that and accepting that, that's where the inside of this boot, this kind of neoprene padded material inside, really shines. I can hike all day. Now in the military, they teach you to keep your feet dry and take care of them. And that's, of course, very good advice. Um, and the reason is because you get blisters and sores and trench foot and whatnot. In this, I was marching over terrain rougher than, or as rough as, any terrain I marched over in the military with at least the same load. I was carrying at least 20 kilos in my backpack, uh, which is 44 pounds, something like that. Uh, so my feet had all of the abuse that they've ever had in any other boot, but they did it soaking wet the entire time without any respite. And you know what? They were completely comfortable. I had a pair of thick wool socks. That's all I wear when I, when I go hiking long distances in boots. And didn't have a problem with blisters, not a single hot spot. Everything was fantastic. So if you're looking for dry feet, this is not your boot. If your feet are going to be wet all the time anyway, it's a really good boot. It's very comfortable. Um, next point, it is a little bit heavy. These boots are heavier than a lot of other boots. And I hope you can hear me. It started raining here. I hope that doesn't affect the audio too much. But these are heavy boots. You will notice it. But, uh, you know, they're, they're not horribly so. It, it doesn't, that's not a con that's so major that it would cause me to, to disregard them. I would still consider them as right away. And that brings me to the biggest con of all with these boots, right here. This is a horrible, horrible heel in a boot. I mean, it's terrible. I, I consider it to be a genuine design flaw. Uh, in 15 minutes, the first time I took them out on the trail after wearing them kind of around the house for a while, in 15 minutes, it had taken all of the skin off of my heel, both sides. And it took quite a while, of course, for that to, uh, to resolve itself. I, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to try and balance here. But you can still see on the back of my heel where that skin has been, has been taken off and uh, new skin has grown under it and a callus has grown, but it took a long time and it wasn't fun at all. Even now, even with the, the skin on the back of my heel toughened up and calloused and reinforced, when you first start walking up hills in these things, you'll still feel that feeling that makes you go, uh oh, this is going to hurt. Uh, my heels are conditioned and the boots have been broken in as well as they're going to be broken in now to the point that I can wear them all day long on a steep slope and I don't get blisters anymore. But that took 20 plus hours of hiking to get to that point uh, in these boots. And that's not counting the other hiking I did to let my heels recover. This, it's a horrible heel. And if you have problems with that, don't get this boot. Because it, it, it will be an issue when you get them and it'll be an issue even long after they're broken in. So if you're gonna need to walk long distances in this boot, Make sure that you use mole skin on the first several outings that you take with it. Big old patch of mole skin on your heel to protect your heel and let your heel toughen up and let the boot get broken in. It seems to become more malleable after it's been wet and walked in, uh, and that's a plus. That helps the problem somewhat, but like I said, even now that it's fully broken in and my feet are fully conditioned, I can still feed it. It's still a, a small issue. It's not a... It's not a showstopper, but it is still a small issue. So I cannot say enough bad things about the heel of this boot. Horrible design flaw, in my opinion. Now, other people may not have that issue. I don't know, but it's not like I have mutant feet. They're, you know, they're normal feet. And I can't imagine that anybody else is not going to have the same problem. Which brings me to the point of why I'm, making, why I'm doing this review anyway. I went online to try to find reviews of this boot and get detailed information and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I wanted to give a good review for somebody who's considering this boot uh, from the perspective of using it in the jungle environment. Um, sizing, it's hard for me to tell. I've got 15 wides and here in this boot, and that's the largest that they make. Uh, I wear anything from a 14 and a half to a 16, depending on the brand of boot, so it's hard for me to tell. 
although according to the foot scale and the actual measurements of my foot, I think they actually run pretty true to size. Uh, again, don't put too much weight in that because I'm way up at the, at the max end of the sizing scale and that may not hold true for the smaller sizes. But I think they run pretty true to size here in the upper range. Uh, very nice, roomy, comfortable toe box. I have plenty, in fact, I have a little bit too much room there. I could use, it with, uh, use a boot that's just a little bit narrower, but uh, I think the narrows would be too narrow, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with this. Lacing system is fantastic, uh, very secure. It's easy enough to lace. It's not super easy, but it's easy enough to lace. And once you lace it, and you do have to lace it quite tight, especially with this heel issue, uh, it stays, it locks your foot in and it stays there. And I have to lace this boot much more tightly than I like to lace a boot. But because of that cushy neoprene uh, interior that it's got, it still remains comfortable and I don't get those little binding points that you'll oftentimes get in a boot where you lace it too tight. It cuts off your circulation and makes it uncomfortable. Uh, this boot has this high-speed, low-drag binding here on the interior for fast roping. I'm a civilian now. I don't fast rope, so I can't comment on that. It doesn't get in the way of normal civilian use. You don't notice it. It doesn't serve any function. Uh, except over, you know, I got my foot caught between rocks at some points and it seems to give a little extra protection there. But other than that, it's really a non-feature as far as a normal civilian would be concerned. Uh, excellent laces, very sturdy. The sole is both glued on and stitched around. And that's an important feature in the jungle. All of my boots have fallen apart. The soles have fallen off of them within two or three hiking trips in the jungle. The glues that they're using today in footwear just don't hold up in these hot, humid, wet conditions. So, the fact that this is sewn on, all it did is, is it saved me the trouble of having to go to the cobbler myself to pay to get them sewn on anyway. So again, I can't say enough good things about the sole. The, the way they've engineered this boot, and the way they've designed it as a sole, is, is fantastic. Can't say enough good things. The upper, soft, Cushy, comfortable, heavy, well padded and protective, uh, absolutely will not get dry for you out in the field. Uh, the only way you're going to dry these out is back in garrison for an extended period of time or in front of a fan. So if you're if you're looking at these boots compared to everything else that's out on the market, the question is going to be, well, this is the base model of the S2B and it's 200 bucks. Uh, there's another model above this, something like 250 bucks. So the question is, really, is this boot worth 250 bucks? I, that's a very subjective thing, I'll admit. But from my point of view, having spent a lot of good quality time in the jungle with these things now, my my assessment is, yeah, if you don't need to keep your feet dry, if you're comfortable walking all day long with your feet wet, yeah, they're worth 200 bucks just for this alone. Just for the sure-footedness and the support and the comfort that it gives you. If you need a light boot, something that actually does dry quickly, absolutely not your boot. Don't go with this. Uh, if you need a boot that the sole is going to last forever on uh, doing rough marches on asphalt or pavement or rocky conditions, I suspect the sole doesn't have the longevity that you're going to look for. Uh, you're going to have to replace it pretty soon. Uh, but in, in this environment, absolutely excels. Can't beat it. Well, if you have any additional questions about this boot, please be sure to, to ask the questions in the comments section, and I'll be happy to answer it. And uh, if you decide to go ahead and get them, I hope they give you many, many miles of enjoyment. Cheers.